This is the Skywatcher Star Travel 120 Acromat. Um, it's F6, sorry, it's actually F5, the uh, four inches is actually F6, so it's F5. And um, one of the things with a short, fast Acromat is when you look at bright stuff, uh, you see a blue haze around the edges, blue fringe. So there's one way to turn your Acromat into an APO. Um, there's all sorts of fancy filters, fringe killers, blah, 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 but they all end up changing the color of the thing you're looking at. So I've looked at Jupiter through a six inch Acromat uh, F6.5 and it was kind of unviewable. I would say the the uh, the halo was so bad. When I used a fringe killer, then the planet was just a really bad color of yellow. It's like, well, that just takes away from the whole feeling of the planet. Anyway, so the other way to do it is really simple and that is just use the um, cap they give you, and I'm assuming they've used this this here so you can actually have a, st uh, a solar filter in this gap here. Um, and so now you have a 50 mil opening. Now, if you're talking about looking at the moon or Jupiter, which are both bright, then your 50 mil opening is going to turn your F6 into an F12, effectively making it an apocromat because basically um, there's a chart that actually shows what the F number has to be for the color, the false color to go away, right? And F12 is in the region for it. And um, the other thing about this is, so you might think, oh no, but we're losing all that resolution. You are losing some resolution, but for instance, this would not look the same as an actual 50 mil scope. When you look at a 50 mil scope, you're, look, you're using the whole 50 mil lens, including the edges. When you do this, you're using the very best part of that 120 lens and you're looking through the best part of it. The, the most shallow curvature of it. So you're, you're, ta you're taking away the edge of the lens completely and looking through just the premium part of the lens. So you really are getting a much nicer, better view than you'd get in a 50 mil scope, which is probably not going to be high end anyway, unless it's a top brand 50 mil scope. There's not many, but there are a few. Anyway, so this 50 mil will get you, I think I just looked it up there, it's two arc seconds is the theoretical limit. So I don't know where you live, but where I live, the seeing is never anywhere better than that. Like probably more like four arc seconds. Just for a little comparison of what two arc seconds is, let's have a look at Jupiter here. So Jupiter, um, at opposition, it's around 50 to 56 arc seconds. And I can't actually, don't have a number for the great red spot, but that's the smallest feature I've ever seen in Jupiter, even with a six inch refractor. I've never seen any of these smaller ovals. I know people with better seeing and in drier climates probably have seen more of this stuff. This here's around 10 arc seconds. So two arc seconds, we're talking about like the central portion of the Great Red Spot, right? So if two arc seconds doesn't seem like it's sharp enough, then it just only seems that way. Uh, by the way, one of Jupiter's moons, which is not in photo, is one arc second. And even if you're, even if the um, scope you're using only has a resolution of two arc seconds, you can still see Jupiter's moon, you just wouldn't be able to resolve it into a disk. So, or if there were two moons were side by side, you might be able to split them. So, two arc seconds is still a very sharp view you're going to get, and almost certainly be li you'll be limited to the atmosphere, not by that scope. And anyway, so I'm just proposing that when you're looking at something really bright, you want the, don't want to see the blue halo. Use a stop time mask, and what I've done, I've just created another one here. You just use cardboard, it's just like making a mask for solar. And um, this one stops it down to uh, 90 millimeters. Get my ruler here. Let's see. Yeah, so this one stops it down to 90 millimeters and just basically gives me the option to let in a bit more light. Uh, stuff like Jupiter, Jupiter's very bright, Saturn is much dimmer depending on opposition or not opposition. So then you can actually change, you know, the actor you want, or you can just look at it and you know, only the bright things are gonna give you that blue fringe. But um, the other thing about having an Acromat is, you know, I had a 127 APO Explore Scientific, a very nice scope, but with the triplet lens, it's very, very heavy at the front end, and they typically make them a bit longer than this. So you get quite a heavy scope. It weighed 20 pounds, just the tube assembly only. Very front end heavy. I had to balance it all towards the back. So for this scope, I'm really looking for deep sky out of this scope. I'm not really, it's not a planetary scope. I have a, a 925 for that. Uh, but this is actually for looking at galaxies, nebula, and actually with um, a 56 mil eyepiece, which I have down here, it's a mid 56 mil eyepiece, I can actually run the scope at 10x, so 10 times magnification with 4.7 inch of aperture, and that gives you like an amazing low power starry sky. So that's what I'm looking for from this scope. And if you, you know, if Jupiter happens to be in front of you, of course you might want to look at it. So then you can use a bar low to get it up to around maybe 150, 170. And if you're finding it to be too bright, I would definitely start off by going 50 mil. And then if you feel that's too dim, then I'd go and, you know, just up the aperture a little bit and try that. So, um, that's the way to turn your acromat into an apocromat. So there you go. Hope it helps.